Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Extreme Performance Series video blogs. Today, I've got a very exciting guest, Ravi. Can you introduce yourself real quick? Sure. My name is Ravi. I work in the performance team at VMware, and I've been in VMware for about 20 years, and I focus on vCenter performance and scale. Yeah, I'm really excited to talk about vCenter with you. You always are very uh, have great in-depth knowledge about vCenter and specifically the performance aspects of it. So what are we going to talk about today? First of all, by the way, Todd, it's a pleasure to talk to you, whether it's about vCenter or anything else. And thank, thank you for the invite. And second, we're going to talk about a question that I hear a lot from customers, which is how many tasks can vCenter do at once? Maybe they're running backup jobs or whatever, and they notice that tasks seem to be queuing up in vCenter and they want to know what's going on. Very, very interesting. Okay, well, um, let's uh, let's get started then. Sure. I think the best way to describe this is through a couple of slides. So if you don't mind, I'm going to uh, bring up some slides. The first thing I want to point out is a lot of the material that I'm talking about is covered in these three excellent blogs written by folks in the performance team, colleagues of Todd and myself. Todd's going to put these links at the bottom of the video. So please read those because this video blog that we're doing right now, it's just going to scratch the surface of what we're what we're actually able to tell you. So the first thing I wanted to start out with was to explain the flow of a request. Whenever you make either an API call or a UI call to vCenter, it goes into our reverse proxy called Envoy, and that figures out where does the request need to go. For example, if you're doing a clone, vMotion, a provisioning operation, and if you're doing using our traditional SOAP APIs, that request is likely to be redirected to this uh, process called VPXD. If you're doing operations, perhaps using our newer APIs, for example, using the RESTful APIs, maybe you're doing a tagging operation, that'll go from the reverse proxy to a different endpoint. For the purposes of this blog, I really want to focus on the VPXD piece because a lot of times when customers ask me how many tasks vCenter can do, they're talking about things, again, like provisioning, power on, et cetera. So, the answer to that question, vCenter as a whole can handle about 600 of those sorts of tasks, these provisioning operations, before it will then start queuing them up. Great. So then the natural question customers ask is, well, I'm not really doing 600 tasks. Why are things queuing up? For that, we have to consider that every task that goes into this VPXD process that goes into vCenter, most of those tasks need to end up communicating with a host. And we throttle the number of operations that an individual host can do because we want hosts, frankly, hosts are there to run VMs. They're not there to do provisioning operations. So to give you the best end-to-end -end performance, we throttle how many we can do. And it's very often those host limits that customers are hitting, not the vCenter wide limit. So let me explain that. what we do is we assign a capacity to every host. So for example, if you're using vSphere 6 or ESX 6.0 or beyond, your host has 16 slots, that's its capacity. And different operations consume different numbers of slots. So for example, vMotion will take two slots or storage vMotion, cross, cross uh, data center, cross cluster vMotion, maybe that'll take eight slots. If you do a link clone, that'll maybe take one slot and you have to do a snapshot. And if you're cloning a powered on VM that you have to take a snapshot first as well. All of these are in the blog, sorry, all of these are in the uh, links that Todd's gonna send you, don't worry. But in any event, the point is you can imagine that when you're sending a request to vCenter, they're ultimately going, a host, going to a host and they're going to have to pay attention to these limits in addition to the vCenter wide limits. Now there's also limits on a per data store basis. There's limits on a network basis. Again, all of these are in those white papers, but the point is each of these limits, vCenter has to look at each of these limits before it, is, it decides whether it can issue a request to a host. So I want to give you a concrete example of this. Imagine that you're going to do a clone from host A to host B, cloning a, sim a simple VM. Now remember, each host has some amount of capacity. It's got 16 of these slots. And remember that a clone costs two of these slots, costs it on the source, and it costs it on the destination. So you can see here that of the 16 available slots that each host has, now two of those slots are taken up by this clone operation, and the remaining slots are now available for other operations that you want to issue to either of those hosts. This is actually one reason that we tell folks, 
hey, don't please, if you can, don't use a single VM template and try to clone everything from that single VM template. Because if you do, what you'll see is a single host will get a lot of requests. You'll quickly fill up all of its free slots. And now vCenter will have to wait until that host is free before issuing more operations. To try to illustrate this visually, imagine that you want to clone the VM depicted in purple to a different host. So the request will come into vCenter, Envoy will redirect it to VPXD, and VPXD will talk to the host and say, please clone this VM. And that VM, that host will go ahead and clone the VM. Now, if you issue multiple operations at the same time, you can see that those operations go to the same source VM and then go to different hosts. That source host could easily become a bottleneck, either because of disk bandwidth or because of running out of capacity, these slots that we've been referring to. So what we typically recommend, if it is practical, is to try to spread out VMs or templates that you're trying to clone so that you can get better concurrency. As an example, maybe you've got one golden template on one host and another copy of that golden template on another host. Now you can see you're basically doubling the concurrency. So remember, vCenter has a limit and then hosts have a limit. So yeah, so I see now what you were saying, how the, 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 the higher limit of 600 sounds like that's really big and you don't understand why you might be running into that. But with a ho individual host limit, if you were to try to do a bunch of clonings and that your template was on that one host, you could easily run into uh, the single host limit. So this is a great exactly. example to, to, to illustrate that for everybody. Oh, thanks a lot, Todd. And, and you know what? It actually applies whether it's vMotion or a lot of other operations. So that's why I tried to pick this example. And uh, to clarify something, I think I said it, and I just want to say it again, is the 600 number, it's, it's, not a, it's a maximum in the sense that after issuing that many, vCenter will start to queue things up, but vCenter will still accept those operations. And so again, they'll just get queued up within vCenter. Okay. So if you want to know if you're hitting these host-specific limits, one quick way to try to do it is to look in the vSphere UI at your taskbar. If you see messages like resource reservation in this details tab, that means that you're hitting this host level limit, whether it's data stores, uh, number of operations per host, et cetera. Instead, if you see things like copy virtual machines, and if you see the progress bar sort of stalled there, that usually means that, well, obviously you're spending time copying data. So maybe you have a big VM or maybe your storage is slow. Maybe your networking is slow, but either way, not, that doesn't mean that it's being queued. It just means that it, the host is busy actually copying the data. It's this first one, resource reservation, that tells you whether the, the host is actually throttling this. Yeah, so if, if people see that resource reservation uh, message, that's an easy way to spot that you're running into these, these limits. So very, very cool, great, great tip. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it very much. You can also look at logs, but this is usually a sort of good first cut way of doing it. By the way, and thanks for uh, sort of pausing me there because I remember, reminds me, if you see queued here, that's when you know that vCenter is actually doing the queuing because it's exceeding that 600 number. And it's, it's extremely rare to see that happen. Now, there's one other limit, Todd, I wanted to point out, because this is one I don't think many customers know about. So I already said that when a request comes in, it goes to our reverse proxy. And maybe if it's a power on or a clone, it goes to, to vCenter. And that limit is 600 tasks. Again, we're ignoring other uh, API services like tagging, et cetera. Now the picture isn't quite this clean. What actually happens, oops, messed up the animation, that's fine, live demo. When a request comes into vCenter, it goes to the, from the reverse proxy, and if it's like a clone or a power on or whatever, and if it's using a SOAP style API, it'll go to VPXD. And then if that request actually needs to go to a host, what actually happens is that the request will go through the reverse proxy and then get sent to the hosts. So I messed up the numbering here, that's fine. But the first step is for you just for Envoy to determine that this is a SOAP API and you want to do a clone or a power on. And so it should go to this VPXD process. The second step is for VPXD to determine what hosts are involved in the operation. And then any requests go through the reverse proxy and then they go to the hosts themselves. Now, there is a distinction within vCenter between tasks and API calls in general. As a simple example, when you run a backup job, typically speaking, that involves taking some sort of snapshot, which within vCenters is a task. Then you query all the blocks that have changed. And within vCenter, that's not counted as a task. It's counted as an API call to a host. And then finally, you remove the snapshot when you're done with all of this accounting. I break this out this way because 
The task limit only refers to things that vCenter is calling a task. And when vCenter makes a call to a host, as I show here, there's actually a limit to the number of concurrent requests that Envoy, this reverse proxy will support. And that limit is 2048. So in other words, the combination of task calls to host plus API calls to host can't exceed 2048. Otherwise, those requests will start getting blocked. If you have questions about that, or if you want to increase that limit within bounds that we've qualified, please refer to this KB article. So I kind of wanted to point that out because this is another thing we've seen customers do. They'll maybe have a backup job that spawns a number. They'll stay within vCenter session limits. They'll stay within task limits, but because they're issuing a lot of API calls, they end up seeing this limit and they're not sure why. So do do, do people run into the, the, the API 2048 limit very often or is that a fairly rare thing? You know, it's funny. Uh, it's typically very rare, but I've been seeing it more and more often as customers have larger and larger number of posts and therefore larger and larger number of concurrent calls that they can make at once. You know, like I said, maybe their backup job will, issue, will set up 40 sessions to vCenter. Maybe each session will start making 20 or 30 calls at a time. You know, maybe if it starts to get up to 40 or 50 calls at a time, you see that you're going to start to bump up against this. So I'm seeing it more and more, but as a whole, it tends to be pretty rare because customer environments aren't are not so large that they hit this limit. So as an example, if you have maybe a thousand hosts on your vCenter, you may be hitting this limit. If you have maybe 200 hosts, you're less likely to, to hit this limit. Um, that's all I wanted to talk about. Like I said, the, the white papers and blogs that you're pointing at have a lot more detail on any of this, and you can obviously reach out to us if you want more. Sure, yeah, so like Robbie said, I'm gonna have all the links posted beneath this video, so you can click on them um, and, and follow for more information. Uh, thanks, Robbie, very much for coming and talking to us about uh, vCenter concurrency. Um, and to everybody else, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you on another episode of the Extreme Performance Series.